Hey, time travelers! It's the Historical Oracle, and today we're going to talk about Eleanor of Aquitaine. So, small confession here, Eleanor is like my favorite historical figure ever. She was brilliant, strong-willed, creative, and courageous, all things attributed solely to men during her time. She was born in Poitiers, Aquitaine, in 1122. Some speculate she was really born in 1124, but I have to agree with the majority consensus on this one. Growing up, her name wasn't Eleanor. It was Alienor, a name from her native tongue, Aquitaine. Aquitaine at the time was not a part of France, though its ruler, the duke, did pay homage to the French king. It wouldn't be until much later, at the conclusion of the Hundred Years' War, that it officially became a part of France. Eleanor was a precocious child, growing up learning Latin, statecraft, literature, music, riding, hawking, and the domestic arts. When she was eight years old, her mother and brother died, and her dad, Duke William X, was like, well, guess I'd better make Eleanor my heir. So he taught her everything there was to ruling a duchy, and on a pilgrimage to Spain in 1137, he died of food poisoning, leaving Eleanor as Duchess of Aquitaine. Now, while Eleanor's father was progressive enough to let her rule in her own right, she still had to get married. So, with scarcely any time to mourn her dad, she was betrothed and subsequently married to Louis Capet, the Prince of France. Eleanor was a romantic type, with a love of poetry and fairy tales, and so she was likely hoping for a dashing, roguish prince. She had pictured, perhaps, a god from Mount Olympus. Oh, Eleanor, how naive. Louis was small, mousy, unhygienic, weak, and cultishly devoted to the church. Louis's father died a week after the wedding, so Louis and Eleanor arrived in Paris immediately to be crowned king and queen. Far from a fairy tale, Eleanor's life as queen was miserable. Louis changed her name because he couldn't pronounce Alienor, and was so fanatically religious that he thought even being attracted to his new wife was a sin. See, Louis was the second son, never expected to be king. He was raised in a monastery, and indeed, he lived like a monk. But then his older brother died in a freak accident involving a pig, and Louis was named Heir. So, he was totally not ready. His hobbies included singing in the monastic choir, fasting for ridiculous lengths of time for literally any reason, wearing ragged, uncomfortable clothing, and serving penance for the sin of thinking his wife was beautiful. Eleanor, needless to say, was nonplussed. But Louis was not actually her biggest rival. No, that special spot in her life was reserved for Bernard of Clairvaux. He was a Burgundian abbot with strict views on modesty, piety, and women's roles. You know, basically he was a barrel of laughs. He strongly disapproved of Eleanor's spirited, worldly nature and elaborate fashion sense. He and Adelaide, Louis's mother, both strongly disliked the young queen, but Louis himself, though he somewhat repulsed her, was initially quite taken with his bride. Then comes scandal, because of course, Eleanor discovers that her younger sister, Patronilla, is having an affair with the much older Count Raoul of Vermandois. She's like, oh no, baby, what is you doing? And Petronella's like, I love him, and his wife doesn't like him anyway, please don't tell the church. And Eleanor's like, girl, I found out because everyone knows, what do you mean don't tell the church? And Petronella goes, you've got me there. And Eleanor goes, okay. Here's what we'll do. I'll go to Louis and tell him the situation and how I don't want you to get in trouble. And Petronella's like, thanks, I owe you one. And Eleanor goes, girl, you owe me many ones. So Louis lets Raoul divorce his wife for Petronella, but his wife's brother, Count Theobald of Champagne, is not pleased with the whole affair and declares war on Louis. Louis eventually wins, occupying Champagne and letting a thousand people burn to death in the city of Vitry in the process. A peace is signed, and Theobald restores his land, but when Raoul marries Petronilla and refuses to leave her, war breaks out once more, and Louis occupies Champagne again. Ironically enough, in 1151, Raoul and Petronilla got a divorce, so all that basically happened over nothing. However, Petronilla was excommunicated. This, of course, meant no heaven when you die, so Eleanor was understandably upset. She pleaded with Bernard of Clairvaux, like, please, you have influence over the new pope, y'all are tight, please undamn my sister. Listen, if you do that, Louis will recognize your buddy as Bishop of Bourges and will make some concessions to Champagne to relieve tensions after the whole war fiasco. And Bernard goes, you're a woman, you're literally sinning just by interfering with the government at all. You're talking business to a man like that's your place. He proceeds to berate her until finally Eleanor, who is just sick of it all, breaks down and says she's just frustrated because she hasn't had children, probably because Louis thinks it's still a sin to touch her. 
So then Bernard, who for some reason is a canonized saint, goes, listen, if you're a good wife and stop pitting Louis against the church, really stop trying to influence them altogether. God will bless you with children. Okay? And Eleanor goes, yeah, whatever, and leaves the church like, well, that didn't solve anything. Anyway, peace is restored, and Eleanor has a daughter, Marie. Louis, who feels guilty about killing all the people in Vitry, decides that the best way to atone is by killing more people, so he goes on crusade. Eleanor came with him, along with a number of her ladies-in-waiting, which undoubtedly infuriated Louis and Bernard alike. The crusade went on as disastrously as one might expect. When they arrived in Asia Minor, the Byzantine emperor, Manuel Comnenos, was like, hey, hey, everything's Gucci. Conrad of Germany just won a major battle. These Turkish armies are literally nothing to worry about. However, Conrad soon caught up to the French army near Nicaea and was like, actually, the emperor just doesn't want too much fighting to destabilize his empire. They crushed us, man, like most of my men are dead. And Louis was like, oh no, anyway, and led them on marching to Antioch like nothing had happened. So Eleanor's uncle, Raymond, prince of Antioch, had asked her and Louis to help them fight off the Turkish encampment at Aleppo so that he might take the land of Edessa, which was basically the entire mission of the crusade. So they were eager to get there, but on the way, they found all the corpses of the German army, and Conrad was like, dude, I told you. Louis and his armies pressed on, but a Turkish unit attacked them on Mount Cadmos and slaughtered most of the army. A grand time was had by all. Louis only escaped because he was dressed like a poor pilgrim and the Turkish army didn't realize he was a king. Right away, they found a way to blame Eleanor, saying the amount of luggage she brought along slowed them down and made them vulnerable. In addition to this, because she sought refuge with Raymond, Eleanor was accused of an affair with him, because a woman couldn't do anything right in the 12th century. In reality, Eleanor was trying to get Raymond to influence the Pope to let her have an annulment. But Louis kidnapped her from Raymond's home, and after he captured Damascus, he and Eleanor left on separate ships. Both ships were attacked by Manuel, who was like, yo, get them back to me, they cause too much trouble. And they escaped that, but then Eleanor's ship got swept up in a storm and brought her to Sicily. King Roger II gave her food and shelter, and she learned that her uncle Raymond, her last hope for an annulment, was killed. Later, she met Louis and they traveled to Tusculum, where the Pope was hanging out after being driven out of Rome. Yeah, the world was basically on fire at the time. Anyway, the Pope didn't grant an annulment. Far from it, in fact. He prepared a special bed for the couple and made them conceive. You know, normal healthy things. But their next baby was another girl, so at this point, Louis decided it was in his best interest to get rid of Eleanor. After all, in his and the French court's point of view, she was literally just a curse to his rule. So, on March 11th, 1152, four archbishops having finally brought Pope Eugene III to his senses, Eleanor and Louis had their marriage annulled because they were, in fact, fourth cousins. She then proceeded to marry her third cousin, Henry of Normandy though she retained control of her lands. When Henry became king of England, their combined territories formed the Angevin Empire. Anyway, that's the story of the early life of Eleanor of Aquitaine. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like down below, and for more trips down memory lane, subscribe to the Historical Oracle. Thanks for watching!